In this video, we are going to talk about a tool that is used by a lot of pilots flying on instruments, but is also the basis of much of the rest of the homework for this term. Turn, time, twist, throttle, talk. The five T's are a way to make sure you're not forgetting something when you're flying IFR. It's actually pretty straightforward. Every time you cross a nav aid, a fix, an intersection, or hit an assigned altitude, you go through these five steps to see if there's anything that needs to be done. Turn. Do I need a course or heading change at this point? Time. Should I start a time? If in doubt, go ahead and start one. It might come in handy. Twist. Do I need a change in frequency or a change in my OBS setting? Throttle. Do I need to start either a climb or a descent at this point? And then finally, talk. Do I need to let ATC know that I'm here? You should practice this until the five T's come out without any effort. When you find that you can't help running through them under your breath when you set your turn signal in your car, then you're probably practicing this about the right amount. It's so easy to forget something, like a, the setting of the OBS or starting a descent, unless you have something like this to help you out. Your homework for the rest of the term will involve, re, revolve around the five T's. They're an excellent way to analyze a procedure or a route and will force you to really pay attention to the details. Make sure that you're looking for each note or symbol as you follow your procedures and look them up as necessary. If you have questions, bring them to class so that we can figure it out together. Since your first 5T's homework is going to be on a SID, let's start with one of those. Here is a SID from Concord, California called the Buchanan II Departure. This is a SID as opposed to an obstacle clearance departure, which means that its primary purpose is to help with traffic flow. It will still give us the obstacle clearance as long as we follow it. As you do your homework, make sure that you have the appropriate legend out. I've extracted this page on the SIDs and STARS from the Chart User's Guide and uploaded it in a content for you. We'll start by looking at the header information. Here the pilot makes sure that they have the correct SID in front of them. This one starts at Buchanan Field and, in, and the main transition is to CCR, the Concord VOR. Note the important frequencies are also right under the title. Looking at the in route low chart for this area, we see, for instance, that if we're headed west, then Croit intersection would be along our route. But if we're headed east, then Pitts intersection is along our route. Let's assume that we're heading east on this flight, so Pitts works for us. I'm going to keep this snapshot of the en route low chart here so that we can stay oriented. Next, it's important to read the text of the departure. We have to find the runway that we think is going to be in use, and based on the winds and our location on the field, we're thinking it's going to be 3 2 right. We first check the minimums for that runway and see what's required. Right away, we see that many of the runways do not allow this SID. That's something to keep in mind in case things change. Our runway allows it, though, and the SID requires a 330 feet per nautical mile climb to 1,000 feet. That's not a problem for a 172 under these conditions, but we also know that there is a symbol for non-standard takeoff minimums, so we need to take a look at those. For this runway, there are actually the, sta the standard takeoff minimums unless we're using a VCOA, which stands for Visual Climb Over the Airport. So we're okay. We also look at the obstacle notes while we're on that page, of which there are many for this departure. Nothing should be an issue as long as things go as planned, though. Now we finally read through the procedures. When the first part of the procedure is the same for more than one transition, 
they give the common part and then the word thence. You pick up reading from there on your particular transition. In this case, for takeoff on runway 32 right, climbing right turn, direct CCR VOR, then on the pits transition from over the VOR on CCR radial 071 to pits intersection. All right, so that is the text description. So now let's go through the procedure on the graphical representation, doing our five T's along the way. For this exercise, I'll assume they cleared me for this SID and gave me an initial altitude of 3,000 feet. We, stay, we start off on runway 32 right on a heading of roughly 320. We planned ahead and so the Concorde VOR is tuned and identified in our number one and we've centered the OBS with a two flag. Let's set our number two to Oakland VOR and identify that and, it, and we'll tune the 022 radial for that one since that's what's eventually going to identify pits for us. After takeoff, we climb straight ahead to 400 feet above ground level which is the standard before turning, before we recenter the needle with the OBS knob and turn right to whatever course is at the top. That's what they mean by direct to CCR. Our five T's are turn right to the course at the top of the OBS, time, if we didn't start one before takeoff, it doesn't hurt to do it now, twist, there's nothing to do at this point because we've already set our OBS, throttle, stays full till 3000, and talk. We can expect to change to departure soon, but for now we don't say, need to say anything. The SID is not to scale, but we can expect to probably reach 3000 before we get to CCR. When we get to 3000, the 5 T's are turn, we don't need because we're still on the way to the VOR, time, we don't also know, we don't need that, twist, we're already set, throttle, we go ahead and perform the level off, and talk. We only need to talk if they told us to report at 3000. It's not normally required. Now we get station passage over CCR with the two flag flipping to a from. The five T's at this point are turn to 071 to start, time, we'll go ahead and start a time, twist to 071 so that we can start tracking that radial and course, and we need to make sure OA key, o, OAK is still set in our number two with the 022 radial. Throttle, we have to ask for a climb if we haven't been given one yet because last I heard we were at 3000 and the altitude for this transition is 3200. We've probably already been given a higher altitude though. And then once again we talk only if asked to by departure and by this point we would for sure be switched to departure. The needle on our number two nav moves slowly to center, meaning we're now at Pitt's intersection. The five T's are turn, we don't need to uh, because we're already on the airway we wanted. Time, we'll start one just in case. Twist, we might see if we need something else in number two, but for now, probably just switch it to CCR so it can back up our number one and tune in the uh, 071 course. Throttle, as needed for any new altitude assignments. We can see that the MEA for the next segment is 3,500. And then finally, talk, only if we were told to report pits. There, we can put our SID away now, and we have our in route chart out. We're established on our planned airway and can start planning for the next five T's. This is as far as you need to go for the SID assignment, 
except that you would need to do it for the rest of the runways. I'll assign you a route for the en route chart the next time. And then after that, we'll do some approach plates. You'll need to do the five T's just like we did here for each runway and transition for your assigned SID. If you'd rather just pick one runway and transition and then do an equal number on other airport, airports so that you can explore some more, I don't have a problem with that. Just make sure that you're ready to talk about at least one in class for your assigned SID. Please don't rush through these assignments just to get the answers. Take your time and explore each plate, learning about every symbol and note. This is where it gets real, folks. Knowing something about these charts can make the difference between being in trouble or not, or between having a scary experience or not, or getting to your destination safely or not. I highly recommend that you fly as many of the transitions as you can in the sim room too. Again, think of this as exploring. Once you get the hang of it, SIDS will be your doorway to the whole world.